what is stuff like apart from form? What is form like apart from stuff? All those problems which have bothered people for centuries are based on asking the question in the wrong way, on having used the wrong image for the process. Actually, uh, since nobody ever saw a piece of shapeless stuff, and nobody ever saw a piece of stuffless shape, the whole thing really is saying that uh, they are the same. And uh, there isn't any necessity even to think of a difference between them. Even the contrasting words, form and substance, or form and matter, are a nuisance. There is process. There is the flow of thought. And the flow of thought doesn't have to happen to anyone. Experience does not have to beat upon an experiencer. There is all the time simply the one stream going on and we are convinced that we stand aside from it and observe it because we've been brought up that way. But you know, in your stream of thought and experience, I am an object and a very fleeting and passing one. And also in my stream of experience, you also are people who come and go. We are all, you see, living in the same world. We think there is me and there is an external world around me, but I am in your external world and you are in my external world. And if you think about that, you see we are all in one world, going along together. There isn't really the internal and the external. There is simply the process. It's very important to get rid of that illusion of duality between the thinker and the thought. So find out who is the thinker behind the thoughts. Who is the real genuine you? And so one of the methods that is used is shouting. The Zen master would say to a student, Now, I want to hear you. I want to hear you say the word mu and really mean it. Because I want to hear not just the sound, but the person who says it. Now produce for me that. He says, mu! And the Zen teacher says, No, no, not yet. Mu! And he says, It's only coming from your throat. I want to hear your belly. You know? And always, you see, it'll never come while the person is trying to make a differentiation between a true moo <laughs> and a false moo. <laughs> to act with confidence, you just do it. But since people are not used to that, it is necessary to set up protected situations in which it can be done. If we just in the ordinary way of social intercourse acted without deliberation, we would get into amazing confusions. As when people say, always speak the truth never tell a white lie and they say exactly what is true and uh, what they think about other people well they can raise a great deal of trouble but the experience of Zen has been that there should be a kind of enclosure in which this kind of behavior can be done until the people are expert in it and know how to apply it in all situations This concludes Session 7 of Out of Your Mind, Essential Listening from the Alan Watts Audio Archives. Our program continues with Session 8.